Hello and welcome. I'm Saeed from StoryPlanet.net. Dive right into the essence of the most captivating books without reading them cover to cover. Whether you're on the go, at the gym, or just relaxing at home, we offer you a unique and enriching listening experience. Today, we are exploring the book, Awakening Compassion at Work, a creation by Monica C. Warleen and Jane E. Dutton. In the book, Awakening Compassion at Work, 2017, the author explores the significance of compassion in the professional setting. The book enlightens readers on the techniques both individuals and organizations can employ to foster a culture of empathy and compassion, emphasizing the mutual advantages that arise from embracing this approach. Before we delve into these revelations, it's interesting to note that Monica C. Warline is a research scientist at Stanford University's Center for Compassion and Altruism Research and Education, with a focus on the psychology of compassion and altruism. She is also the CEO of Enlivenwork, a company that provides coaching to businesses to foster compassionate leadership. Jane E. Dutton, a university professor of business administration and psychology at the Ross School of Business, University of Michigan, is also a co-founder of the Ross School's Center for Positive Organizations. With eight key ideas to unveil, brace yourself for a deep dive into this captivating book on storyplained.net. To start, the text is asking the reader to learn about the factors that contribute to a better workplace. Compassionate workplaces can lead to higher productivity and lower turnover. Employees who are satisfied are more likely to work harder and be more efficient. Businesses can foster genuine camaraderie and empathy, creating a positive work environment. In this book, you'll learn examples of compassionate workplaces and the benefits they bring. Key idea number one. Companies should prioritize creating a positive work environment for their employees. Work-related stress is a common problem that can cause unnecessary suffering for employees. The case of Patty, an executive assistant who was relocated and isolated after a company restructuring, illustrates the negative impact of management decisions on employees. However, there are companies that minimize employees' suffering through compassionate leadership. The example of Andy, a company leader who showed compassion towards an employee grieving the loss of a sibling, demonstrates the positive outcomes of a compassionate approach. A key idea number two, compassion plays a role in improving companies' performance and fostering innovation. Valuing compassion in the workplace leads to better performance and financial health for companies. Research by Kim Cameron in 2004 showed that compassionate workplaces were more productive and better at retaining clients and employees. A Gallup poll after the 9-11 attacks confirmed that compassion increased employee motivation and engagement. Compassion also has the potential for innovation, as seen in the success of the Aravind Eye Hospitals in India. Companies should prioritize compassion towards both their customers and employees for their own benefit. Key idea number three, being able to recognize suffering in the workplace can be challenging, but adopting an attitude of inquiry and curiosity can be beneficial. Compassion involves perceiving when someone is suffering. Employees may not always openly share their problems with employers. In a case study, an employee named Dorothy was struggling with her husband's illness but was too ashamed to request time off. Her boss, Sandeep, noticed her absences and approached her with empathy. The key tools for compassion are inquiry and curiosity. A study found that counsellors who showed curiosity and asked about children's feelings had better outcomes at camps for children of cancer patients. Managers can use similar techniques to prevent suffering in the workplace. Key idea number four. How people respond to suffering can either increase or reduce their level of compassion. The business world can perpetuate harmful cliches that work and personal life are incompatible. These attitudes rationalize suffering in three ways. Blaming someone for their own suffering, deciding someone doesn't deserve compassion, or believing there is not enough time or resources to help. If we withhold blame and seek the root causes of poor performance, workplaces can become more compassionate. Examples of companies responding differently to employees affected by Hurricane Sandy show the impact of blame on compassion levels. 
Snap appraisals that lead to blame and compassion cannot coexist in the workplace. Key idea number five, empathy is naturally within us, but without actively considering others' viewpoints, it can fade away. Empathy is innate, but can be blocked. Our brain is wired for empathy and can pick up on subtle cues to recognize if someone is suffering. However, empathy is often cast aside in work situations due to self-interest or fear of repercussions. Empathy can be unblocked by trying to understand another person's perspective through cognitive empathy. In an example at a law firm, a boss was able to recover her empathy by imagining the situation from an employee's perspective and finding ways to support her. Key idea number six. The goal is to demonstrate compassion through action, regardless of the size of the deed. Empathy is not enough. It needs to be shown in the moment. Displaying empathy requires improvisation and taking compassionate action. Being flexible and supportive to colleagues in times of need is a prime example of empathetic action. Small gestures such as being attentive and available to listen can also show empathy. In the case of Nazima, her colleague Ed sent daily messages to let her know he was there for support. This strengthened their empathy and made it easier for Ed to understand and provide the support Nazima needed. Examples like this highlight the importance of turning empathy into action. Key idea number seven. Workplaces have the potential to be compassionate environments and companies can actively promote compassion among employees. Changing a company's culture to be more compassionate is challenging but possible. Midwest Billing, a company that does paperwork for hospitals, has achieved a compassionate work atmosphere. Employees help each other out, as shown when Dorothy received assistance with a large workload. Midwest Billings created subunits to foster personal connections and solidarity among workers. They also implemented support pods to provide assistance and help new employees learn about different parts of the company. Key idea number eight. Great leaders prioritize compassion and inspire others to be empathetic. Leadership with compassion is crucial during times of trouble as people turn to leaders for guidance. The best leaders develop deep personal connections with their employees, listen to them closely and value their personal development. Pat Christen, CEO of Hope Lab, supports her employees by finding out what's going on in their lives and providing funds for their personal growth. Great leaders also inspire compassion in others by communicating its importance within the workplace. However, compassion is not easy and requires noticing suffering, interpreting emotions, feeling empathy and taking compassionate action. Leading with compassion sets an example and fosters productivity, compassion and success within a company. In conclusion, compassion in company management improves performance, fosters innovation and creates more rewarding workplaces with lower employee turnover rates. To cultivate compassion, reflect on ways to make the workplace more compassionate, learn from compassionate leaders, and address patterns or cultures that lack compassion. Thank you for listening to this summary. If you enjoyed this exploration, we invite you to discover other fascinating books on storyplanet.net. Don't wait any longer. A multitude of books, stories, and knowledge await you there. See you soon on storyplanet.net.